The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Daryl Martin. All righty, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And let's check out where the markets are at right now. We got the S&P is down six points on the day. We got the Russell down a little over 12, and the NASDAQ down 18. With the Dow down just a mere 20 points, looking like it might want to bounce on back up, I guess. We'll see. Uh, looking over at copper right now, we got copper pretty flat on the day. We got gold is currently down 9 points on the day with silver currently down 0.2% and natural gas down 0.77, almost down 1% there. Oil down a buck fifty. Been having some big moves in oil lately, some nice clean moves there. Down a dollar fifty on the day, 1.49%. And looking at our ag markets, looking at corn, corn is down almost 1.5%, down about 5 points on the day. We got soybeans down a quarter percent, just down a couple of points. We got uh, our FX pairs, pound dollar is currently up 63 pips, nice big move. We got the euro dollar is down 52, the euro pound is down 58 pips. So big moves on the euro pound, uh, usually not getting that kind of movement. Looking on over at the dollar cat, we got dollar cat up 48 pips. We got the dollar franc up 38, and dollar yen is up 11. Pound yen currently up 81 pips, with the euro yen down 37, and the Aussie yen down 27. And with that right there, uh, that uh, wraps up our current market wrap. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of these markets real quick. Like I said, uh, oil just a nice smooth downtrend right into the one deviation. Hesitates for a little while. And then moves on down to one and a half and bouncing back off that now. And it uh, looks like it might head on back up to one deviation on the day. So that uh, gets us caught up there on oil. And let's see. Let me pull up a few other things for you. I know we uh, go through the news every day. We got a good chunk of the week done yesterday. So let's see what is left on our schedule that we haven't covered yet. And make sure we get that down so you have a news plan, news outlook. Diagnostic trading is about looking at the way other people look at the markets so you can be one step ahead. Okay? So if you know where people are going to start putting orders at, then that might be a high accumulation order area where you may want to be taking profits or tightening stops, not where you should be getting in. Think about all the trades you go, where should I get in? And it gets there a lot. A majority of the time it gets there, but then it seems to be anybody's guess afterwards. Everybody else is thinking the same thing. So the market goes to where orders are. Where do you think you should get in? That's where you should be getting out. Okay? Um, anyway, so uh, let's check out uh, the fundamentals because you want to be one step ahead of when the markets are going to move. Don't be caught off guard. When news comes out, don't um, not have you should have an expectation of what news is coming out and the kind of impact that certain economic events are going to have on the market. With that in mind, let's go through and uh, let's put together this plan for you so you can be ready uh, for the upcoming events. So uh, let's see where did we leave off yesterday? I was going through, I was catching you on up. We got, obviously, all the 14th done. We got the 15th uh, wrapped up. Nice. And, uh, well, that one went pretty well. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and look in a couple of the reports from yesterday. We haven't done that yet. And I'll pull up a couple charts, and then we'll uh, move forward on the week. So we got the pound dollar. That was uh, the evening report there that we were focusing on. And as an 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. report. Uh, for the uh, release on the jobless claims, usually a decent move on the pound dollar. 
And so let's see how did it play out. Well, we got a five-minute chart up. Let's pull. I need to change that over. Let's get that a five-minute chart. Get that a little bit cleaner. And um, had a tick-based chart on there. The diagnostic bars. And okay, there we go. That's a little cleaner for us. Get rid of a couple of things on here that don't quite apply. All right. So looking on over here, looking at the five-minute bars. And looking at a, what an 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. entry, right? That was our trade that we were looking at. And so if we go over here and check out, okay, we're getting in at 11 o'clock. What kind of move did we get to 7 a.m.? What was our high? We really got the high right off the release, too. We got 74 pips. Perfect. So uh, more than enough movement and definitely would not have been a good straddle. So as you can see right there, just, I mean, released a high. You got 68 of those pips in a matter of, like, 10 minutes. So perfect straddle trade uh, laid out last night. Let's check out what we got on a couple other trades. Um, let's see. Uh, we're starting to get our, you know, our earnings releases are coming out as well. So, you know, you want to make sure you're aware of those. And uh, we can do a little uh, check on this right here. But um, let's see, what do we got? Intel earnings coming out, and it should be coming out today based on my report. Um, I go through and I try to get all these together and have them done in advance. But it looks like the conference call and the earnings report, upcoming event, Intel Corporation earnings call at 2 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, now the call and the report can come out at different times. So I want to make sure you are having these on uh, your list. But that's the Intel report right there, INTC. And expected time is somewhere around 4.15, okay? So we can update that to a confirmed date. And uh, we need to make sure we're getting those all caught up and uh, you know, verifying each one of them. All right. So um, anyways... We got uh, the move there. Let's see what else we got on our schedule. Uh, this morning we had uh, Coke and Johnson and Johnson there. And uh, what do we got coming out tomorrow on the earnings schedule? It's like uh, got our big Google trade. So let me uh, verify that one. We'll be checking out the Google trade tomorrow. And just to verify they haven't changed anything. Um, okay, so it's going to be on Thursday. So they bumped it to looks like the 17th. So we go in, I get the, the tentative date, and then you go back and you check it again. Um, it's like 717, and they release like right after the bell. So we'll need to get that one up to date right there. Um, because that is an important one. And then we got IBM as well coming out soon this week. Uh, let's check out IBM earnings. Why is it so important to know some of these earnings, um, even if you're not a stock trader? Well, NASDAQ is going to, Google is going to move NASDAQ, okay? Just hands down, it's going to move it. Um, and so you want to make sure that you definitely are, you know, prep for it. You don't want to be in like a NASDAQ trade or really any of the indices whenever Google comes out, when Apple comes, you know, Apple comes out after the bell. But you just don't want to be stuck in a trade at the wrong time. Um and let's see here, just trying to find quarter four, yep, 17th of July. So, and so that is confirmed, 17th of July on IBM. Around 4.30, the announcement should actually, the earnings release, the report should come out at 4.10. So that's one thing to be aware of is you'll see a press conference on earnings. And... I need to be aware that even though that press conference is coming out, a lot of times the, the the actual wire report will come out before it, so that way the analysts have a chance to run through it really fast and be ready to ask a few questions on that conference call. Okay, so press conference does not mean necessarily the time that the release comes out. Usually the press conference, the uh, release, the actual wire, the news wire that comes out um, happens before the press conference does. Let's see. Uh, we also looks like I have General Electric. Uh, last time I checked, General Electric earnings 
And let's see here. They are scheduled for first quarter, first quarter, first quarter. Um, need second quarter report date. There we go. July 18th for General Electric. So we're going to want to put that one on there, make sure that's up to date. So they bump that one over. Um, all of these NASDAQ earnings. And that uh, looks like the major ones we have left for the week on. Like I said, we already uh, talked about Intel Corp. And we got Google um, happening on the 17th. We got General Electric. Looks like they're going to be doing it on uh, Friday morning. So they usually release around 6.30. Their wire usually comes out. And then uh, at 4.10, uh, like right before the bell, on the 17th. So not only will you have like Google at 4, but you'll have Intel at 410 um, coming out on Thursday is the uh, estimated time there for the release. All right. Uh, we had a uh, yelling talking today. We also had a uh, potential Iron Condor on a few various releases. Let's look over at that Iron Condor. We got our straddle that worked out well. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, Euro dollar. Okay. And uh, we had a couple different ways to uh, trade this. I was looking at, um, and one of them was to go in. It's early as 8 a.m. for a 10 a.m. Actually, as early as you could go in as 8 a.m. on a 10 a.m. expiration, and let's see how that would have played out because we got a little bit more movement there at the end. So, but looking right here at 8 a.m., got a release. We go to 10. A.M. closes right there. 27 pips. We were going for a profit of 30. That means you basically got a few dollars out of the trade. Didn't work out as well as hoped, but uh, didn't lose money either. So I can live with that. Um, and that's sort of why we pr we're pricing them right to where when you get that little average move, like nothing happens. Because if you try to go for less, then you can get hit on those. And then if you try to go for much more, then you just never get filled at all. So a lot of it is about finding that right balance on um, when to do that trade. Um. Anyway, so that will give you the uh, really the catch. It was like for yesterday. Um, we had some euro sentiment being aware. Euro dollar five o'clock. Some stuff coming out. Um, got a little bit of a move there on it. And let's see there. Had a little uh, odd thing on the computer. Hopefully it's still broadcasting. Um. Let me see here. Let me just re-push my window up just in case. There we go. All right, we'll be right back after this, and uh, we'll talk about the day and get you caught up for the rest of the week. But uh, that got you caught up as far as currently, and make sure that news plan is in place so we can knock those things out and be ready to look for some trades here going into the end of the week. All right, we'll be right back after this break. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts 
Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks, going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, what we're looking at right here is checking out the euro, dollar, and looking at everything else. Um, on the euro dollar, um, we had uh, the mark, the trade stayed right where we uh, wanted it to on that. And let's see uh, what we had left on our plan um, for the markets. I want to close out a couple things here. Um, and bring that on back up. There we go. Okay. And on... Oh, well, there. A couple uh, tabs closed down on me. There we go. <laughs> um, there we go. That's I love that reboot feature. This brings them all right back up. Let me pull up the plan for today. Sorry, I had a little reset thing there on Chrome. That would get going on. And there we go. Okay, so what are we going to have for, um, we got CPI tonight on New Zealand dollar if you're trading that. Uh, we're going to have tomorrow, we're going to be looking at jobless claims, PPI, data industrial production, and overnight rate. We went into most of these reports yesterday for you. Um, talked about the, you know, 8 to 10 a.m. iron condor that's covering industrial production, PPI, core PPI, tick data news, all of that. We're looking at a $30 minimum profit iron condor that's buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread on the euro dollar. And um, that's simple. So getting an eight for 10 a.m. expiration, euro dollar, $30. Uh, got that one covered for yesterday. We also have the weekly oil, oil inventory report coming on up. So right over here, if I go ahead and pull up oil and get that one going. Then uh, we can look at what the expectation is on oil for movement tomorrow. 
um, during the oil inventory report. And man, so yeah, popped right back up at the one deviation level. So we talked about right there at the beginning of the show. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the expected range, high to low. Open that on up. And then now let's scroll on down and check out the uh, release there, 16, 10 o'clock hour. So the 10 to 11 hour right here, we got a expectation on Wednesday of 60 pips. So, and uh, pretty high before and after two, 40 and 52. So that's three hours looking for some decent range um, of movement. And that is your oil inventory report to be ready for. Uh, okay, so now that we got uh, that wrapped on up for you, let's go ahead and look at what else we have? A uh, big thing we want to look at is for tomorrow um, uh, is the dollar cat. We did talk about the dollar cat report yesterday. We sort of left off there. Go ahead and pull the dollar cat up now as we're talking about it and going through it. And get all my charts ready so you can see them. Right here on Diagnostic uh, Trading here at TFNN. You can, uh, don't forget, you can go to Tiger TV and check out the archive, Channel 7, if you want to see the uh, news reports that went over yesterday. But uh, we're going in right here. We had a let's go one deviation move, um, maybe a little bit more. Looks like it sort of pulled pulled up past a little bit, but came back down and sitting right at one deviation right now. Exactly how far I posted last night. I post these every night at 8:30 to tell you exactly how far each market should move on any given day, and uh, that never does change on a daily basis based on the implied volatility in the underlying markets options. So looking on over here and checking out this report. Um, let me bring this one up for you, and what you'll see is, let's see, let's go into Wednesday, and we got USD CAD coming out with their monetary policy, overnight rate, banker rate statement, and they're going to have Yellen talking at the same time, okay? Um, and then at 11.15, they're going to have a Bank of Canada press conference. So we need to consider that as we go into this report, that uh, there's going to be a press conference at 11.15 that could give us additional um, volatility on this report, okay? So it's not just like a 9 to 11 because we could miss out. So you could look at the 9 to 11, but you also may want to have considerable consideration for that extended time, which means that you may be looking at getting in anywhere between 7 and 11, um, or 7 and 9.30. Uh, so that would be as early as 7, as late as 9.30 for the 3 p.m. expiration, and let me see how that would play out if that's what we did. Uh, I'm going to go in and update my charts a little bit so I can sort of narrow it down to that range. When we get back, we'll go over how this trade would work out as either a condor or a straddle or neither. Okay? We'll go to that when we get back right after this break. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full-month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy 
publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the doll because the doll is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, going back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, checking out uh, where all the markets are at. We're looking at that Bank of Canada uh, um, release and press conference. And I would look at, okay, so we're going to have a couple different trades here. You can enter anywhere as late as like 9.45 for the 11 a.m., okay? For the 11 a.m. expiration, enter at nine, as late as 9.45. So between 9 and 9.45 for the 11 a.m. expiration to do a straddle for $25 maximum risk okay or you can enter any time before 945 the earlier the better okay so 7 a.m. between between 7 and 945 enter the 3 p.m. Eastern time expiration for an iron condor buying the lower spread selling the upper spread minimum profit 40 bucks that'll give you a break-even range of 60 pips up and down. It's only moved more than 60 pips once out of the last 12 releases, okay? And many times much less than that. Uh, so we'll probably expect to make about 20 or so on it, but uh, that's what we're looking for. But uh, anyway, so regardless of that, though, uh, $40, 7 to 9.45 entry, buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread over on the Nadex exchange. And uh, doing an iron condor there for the 3 p.m. expiration. With that much time on the clock, should be able to pull that one off. And then also check out a potential, because when it pops, it pops quick. There's usually not a lot of movement. That's why I don't mind carrying that iron condor all the way out. It's usually pretty quiet leading up to the release, and it's pretty quiet um, going out to it. Now that leaves us one additional trade. 
And so I'm pulling that one up right now to see if it will work out. And the additional trait is how quiet is it leading up to it? So, and, um, you know, looking at, say, like starting at 8 a.m. So right there on the, you know, the market open. Let's see, we got 10 pips. We got, trying to get this right here, about 17. Then we got like five. One point we had 26. Yeah, there can be a little bit of volatility. Like the, the usually the net is very little, but there can be a little volatility of about 20, 25 pips. So um, that's up and down. I necessarily like expiration there. So another potential trade on that USD CAD report is 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. So entering at 8 for the 10 a.m. expiration right before the release comes out. And I'd be looking at a 20 dollar minimum profit iron condor on that one okay so usually not going to get that much movement there but it could easily oss a little bit leading up to it so twenty dollar minimum profit iron condor 8 a.m to 10 a.m on the usd cad leading up to the rate statement and then of course we're hopping in another one around 9 to 9 45 for a potential straddle if it's cheap enough in other words no more than 25 dollars and somewhere between 7 and 9 45 like the earlier you're gonna get more premium um for at least uh, 40 bucks minimum profit iron condor. And iron condor is the neutral trade where you want it to stay in between the prices where you bought and sold. Straddle is where you want it to break out of the prices where you bought and sold. Okay? That'll cover our uh, CAD overnight rate uh, announcement, their Fed funds rate for uh, CAD, basically. Um, and now let's hop in. Let's check out what else we got here. Uh, really nothing else happening that night. Um, I guess you could stick on your calendar. I don't think it's a major one, but let's see. There's like a finance symposium, so you might want to put it on there. There could be some stuff come out. Uh, just sort of a be aware of um, the 955 release coming out. Um, RBA governor uh, is going to be making a little speech. And that will be for Wednesday evening at 9.55 p.m. Be aware, RBA governor making a small speech. Okay? Not a major press conference, but still something to be aware of. Rolling on over to Thursday. Um, and uh, what we have on the list, I want to say we also had yesterday. Don't we have, uh, I think I went over this. I just want to make sure. Yeah, Yellen is going to be speaking as well at 10 a.m. So make sure she's testifying before the House. Um, I want to say she testified before the Senate this morning. Yeah, she'll be uh, testifying before the House tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, so could also be some volatility there, depending upon what questions they ask. Um, so make sure you have that be aware on your calendar for 10 a.m. Chellen, Chellen. <laughs> Fed uh, Yellen, Chair Yellen there, um, is going to be uh, talking at 10 a.m., okay? And, okay, rolling back on over to Thursday. What all do we have on our list? We got the uh, CPI. For Europe, we got a new residential construction and jobless claims and Philly Fed coming out right here. We're also going to have natural gas storage. Uh, so, uh, you know, definitely have the natural gas storage there on your list. And we'll have monetary policy meeting minutes at 7.50 on the yen. So uh, make sure you put that as a be aware of it. 7.50 uh, U.S. yen uh, monetary policy meeting minutes are coming out. Could have a bit of an impact on the yen, the Aussie as well. Okay, so let's uh, dive into these reports real quick, uh, get these knocked out. We got the CPI for the euro dollar, which is going to be released there on Thursday at 5 a.m. That will automatically uh, pretty much put us into an 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. trade that we'll be looking for. That's our usual MO there. And let's see how it would work out. What are the average moves on this report? So looking at 7 a.m., we got uh, a few things to consider, but we got a 10-pip uh, move. We got a 8-pip move. And pretty small. Uh, four pips. 36. That's a big one so far. 16, 20, 30, 3. Uh, we had a 60. There we go. A little bit bigger move. About 45, some, well, let's see, exact if I zone in right on 7 a.m. It went up to 60, but it came back down to 
a close of 41. We got 11. We have a 20 pip move. Okay, so we had a one that went basically we had basically a 40, a 35, and a 45, and the rest of them were staying right like in the teens, uh, with I think one more at 30. So we had with that with everything being in the teens, I would say you want a 30 dollar minimum profit. So you have a couple that may have lost 15 bucks, one that broke even, and then nine that made anywhere between 15 to 25 dollars. Okay. Um, over the last 12 reports, so that would have come out pretty well. Uh, so let's make that our plan. We got 30 pips on the Euro Dollar CPI report year over year, entering at 11 p.m. for a 7 11 p.m. Wednesday night for a 7 a.m. Thursday morning expiration. And again, that's a $30 minimum profit iron condor on Nadex on the Euro Dollar, buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread. And uh, so that knocks out our. CPI report there. Next day we got new residential construction and jobless claims. And I'm going to put those up. You might hear my puppy there barking in the background. She just had several little uh, cute little puppies. So she got a whole bunch of new border collies running around the house. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, anyways, we got to check it out where we're at right now. We got a June 830 release. And. 12 pips, let's see, 12 more, and uh, let's try to look at what's the best way to put this uh, report out. Let's check out the 10 a.m., like an 8 a.m. entry for a 10 a.m. expiration, see if we can encompass everything inside that happening all at the same time. Okay, so if we look at a 10 a.m. expiration on it, down 20 pips, uh, up 13, we got up 20, we have... Up 17, down 17. We have, what is this, up uh, 15, down 4, down 12, um, down 1. All right, so, you know, 25 pips or more, obviously more would be better, but 25 pips or more. On the euro dollar, entering at 8 a.m. for a 10 a.m. expiration iron condor on Thursday morning. That's trading the unemployment claims, the housing starts, the building permits, and the foreign security purchases. All that fun stuff coming out at the same time. Uh, that's on CAT, so it shouldn't have too much of an impact. But regardless, um, those reports for the euro dollar, uh, for the dollar releases, but using the euro dollar to trade it. Hopefully, you can get 30 to 35, but 25 at a minimum profit. Okay? Um, rolling on in, looking at we got Philly Fed be the next report we could potentially do something with. Uh, so on the Philly Fed right there, and that's a 10 a.m. release. So probably best uh, let's check out and either we're gonna do an 11 o'clock, like okay, enter at 10 and go to 11, or right before 10 and go to 11. So you got 10 pips. We have 35 pips, 5 pips, 7, 4, and 30, 5, 5, let's see, 7. Okay, so pretty small there. Uh, I would actually say go for 20, if you see if you can get 25 pips on a 9 to 11 on Euro Dollar as well. So we got an 8 to 10. But then at 9 o'clock, we'll get another one for a 9 to 11, trading the Philly Fed manufacturing. Um, if you're taking that into the close, you have to get quite a bit more because it does uh, usually keep on trending. And I've noticed, just looking at uh, the history on this, you usually get a nice uh, trend going. Wherever it's going by 1 o'clock, it seems to uh, like to keep going. So, at least on uh, these release days. But uh, anyway, so check that out. That's uh, another potential report for you. And that will wrap up Thursday. So that's all of our trades on Thursday that we're looking at. So what else do we got to wrap up? Let's check out Friday. Friday, we're going to have core CPI, wholesale sales, and CPI all coming out of Canada. Uh, we also got the European current account coming out. So we might be able to pull off another condor on that one. The trade that normal, we'd probably just ignore. But you know what? That's one of the great things about uh, trading on Nadex. You can make money, like I said, in flat markets. Uh, so on current account, 
if we're looking at a 4 a.m. release and a Friday on top of that, and we got out at 7 o'clock, and I just got to make sure, the one thing I always had to make sure on the night was I have to look at the previous market activity, but um, it's like a 7 a.m. release, like 7 ticks on the last report, um, 24, going in looking at the one after that on the current account there, so right here is what we're looking at. And looking at the last 12 releases and how far it moved on each release. All right, we got uh, 12, we have 20, we have another 20, 13, 25, 12, 2, and 4. So very, very small moves. Be looking at a 25 pip iron condor, buy the lower spread, sell the upper spread for a 4 a.m. Release there, uh, getting in at seven, or sorry, getting in at 11 p.m. for a 7 a.m. expiration. So 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., 25 pips or more iron condor, and um, trading the current account. So 11 p.m. to 11 p.m. Thursday night for 7 a.m. Friday expiration. All right, and that leaves us with one last one on the docs. Here we got the core CPI wholesale sell CPI report, and all those are CAD based trades. And uh, let's see if we get some decent movement consistently on these. We had a real nice straddle last week we did over on all the uh, unemployment rates and employment change reports there. Let's see if we uh, might have a similar setup today. Okay, so looking at just out of the gate right there, um, if we were looked at, like I said, 8 to 10, we got a 50 pit move. Then we got right after that, we got like 10, pretty small. Uh, 14, 20, 30, 10, 25, 25, 11, 10, 20. So, you know, with the world's rating as high impact, that's the high impact, 20 pips. So let's go ahead and let's look for a $30 minimum profit, um, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., on the 8 a.m. entry for a 10 a.m. expiration on the dollar CAD. And we'll go ahead and uh, check out. Let me look at 3 o'clock, too, because, I mean, being a Friday and not a whole lot going on with the news. Let's see, 3. Yeah, it gets a little bit bigger on a couple of them. We do get up to, like, the 30s and 40s a few times by the end of the day. So um, there's basically been one trade that that trade wouldn't have worked well on. So... Not too bad for the last 12 months. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for probabilities. We're measuring. You want to measure. When you're doing these news trades, you want to measure the same release against the same release. And uh, don't measure like the NFP against the core CPI on CAD, right? Two different trades. All right. Well, I hope you all have a great day. We'll be back here in just a minute right after this break. We'll keep on going for you. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. 
the king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And what we're looking at right now is just going through and making sure you're caught up for the week. We got the week all caught up and ready to go and uh, ready to roll right there. Let's just do a quick sneak peek into next week's view. Um, nothing happened on Saturday, Sunday, bank holiday in Japan. So uh, you can go ahead and add that one to your calendar now and knock that one on out. And uh, so that will uh, makes the yen really interesting <laughs> the way to trade. Uh, it can pop and be, I mean, insanely flat. A lot of times, you still get the implied volatility of a normal day. And so it can be a really good uh, butterfly time. Just a hint, hint for you. Um, and so oh, let's see what else we got. We got uh, Monday on the 21st, we're going to have eh, nothing. Uh, we'll have an RBA governor speech, a couple of those going on. Uh, they're getting out there and talking a whole bunch, but that's about it. So a couple of Be Aware events, 7.25 and 11 p.m. next Monday, RBA Governor talking. And looking at Wednesday, uh, we'll have Core CPI and CPI on the dollar. We'll be checking that out, existing home sales. We'll be looking at that. You want to be aware the G20 meetings are starting back up, so those will go for a few days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, starting next Tuesday. And then we'll have a CPI. We'll be checking that out for the Aussie dollar. Looking on over at Wednesday. Uh, we'll have asset purchase facility votes and all that fun stuff. Um, usually not a whole lot we do there, but we'll look at it and see if there's anything we might be able to make out of it. Um, core retail sales and retail sales. G20 meeting going on, crude oil inventories. Uh, we'll have the bank rates out of the New Zealand dollar. And um, HSBC flash manufacturing PMI. That'll be a be aware event to put on your calendar, 9.45 p.m. next Wednesday on the 23rd. Usually we'll have an impact 
Those China reports usually do impact the Aussie and the Yen pairs. So any combination that has Aussie or Yen in it. Uh, we'll get on over Thursday. We'll have uh, some Australian well, manufacturing PMIs out of France, Germany, and the European one. We'll have uh, radio unemployment claims, retail sales out of uh, Britain there. We'll give us a uh, definite news trade. And we'll have some new home sales and natural gas storage. Uh, Japan has a few uh, light impact reports. We'll check out those CPI, see if there's anything to them going into the week. And then on Friday, uh, we'll have preliminary GDP coming out of the pound. That should uh, set us up for good news. Trade core durable, durable good orders. Core durable good orders uh, next Friday. So it's going to be a really light news week next week. So just be aware of that. That usually means a little lower volume. And it is summer on top of that. So it could be a pretty light week. Definitely make sure you're diversifying um, in the sense of looking at, you know, things like metals and ags, not just forex, not just indices. You may want to be looking around a little bit. Um, sometimes we can get some really clean trends. Uh, just be aware of that, too. I mean, sometimes we can get some nice clean trends um, on the indices when the news news is light because the market isn't waiting, waiting, waiting for news to come out. And then it comes out and it moves and then it just stops. So hopefully we'll get some nice clean trends right there, and uh, that will be advantageous if it works out for us that way. Ah, sorry, my mic was messing up there. Um, so, but a pretty light news week, and uh, but we will have we do have earnings coming out. That is going to be the big driving factor. Okay, so that's going to be the main thing that we're going to be watching. As all these earnings reports start pouring in, and um, they start really start up, you know, full gear this week, and uh, so, and then we'll go into next week, and we we'll have a lot of reports on the docket. Uh, looks like we're going to have uh, United Technologies, Comcast, McDonald's, um, as well as Gilead and uh, AT and T all coming out um, on potentially on Tuesday. I'll get those confirmations for you. Procter Gamble, Boeing, Facebook, Apple, Qualcomm, Verizon. Uh, Visa, Amazon, and Microsoft. So pretty big uh, earnings week next week. That's going to be the big news moving the indices right there. All right. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you right here tomorrow on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.